Yeah. Come on, put your hands together.
Well, thanks for joining us here at Calvary Temple Online. If you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah chapter 50. We're gonna be looking at Isaiah chapter 50 as we talk about a blessed life, a blessed life. Speaking of a blessed life, uh, today is, is mine and my wife Marcia's 45th anniversary, and so I wanna wish my wife a happy anniversary today and, uh, because I have had truly a blessed life. Hey, it's meme time, and I wanna share with you some memes that uh, I come across. I, I find these memes, and I either can relate to them or I find them funny in some way. And I saw this one. Uh, Rabbits jump, and they live for eight years. Dogs run, and they live for 15 years. Turtles do nothing, and they live for 150 years. Lesson learned. How many can relate to that, right? Relate to that? You know, the older I get, this next one I really can relate to. Uh, the, the, the one guy says, uh, you know, when I was young, I was five foot six. Now that I'm old, I'm five foot two. And then his friend leans over to him and says, I hope you live to be four foot ten. I find that funny, but I also can relate to it, right? It, we kind of shrink as we get older. Uh, I thought this one was pretty funny. Uh, sometimes I shock myself with the stuff that I say and do. And then there are those times when I try to get out of the car with the seatbelt on. Been there, done that, right? Kind of reminds me of this next one. Them, they say, work smarter, not harder. Here's me, you know, shoes at the knees. That's working smarter, right? That's working smarter. And then I thought this one kind of was pretty uh, relevant to our modern day culture. You know, chickens have stopped crossing the road. Now they call an Uber, ooh, you know, you, Uber, uh, like in sheep. I thought it was funny. Anyway, I thought this one was kind of funny too. And it goes along with being blessed, actually, since we're talking about a blessed life. The one guy says, excuse me, I ordered a dozen bees. You gave me 13. And the man said, well, that's a freebie. Get it? Freebie. I mean, you like freebies. Uh, maybe not in the honeybee sense though, right? Hey, well, let's get into it today. Before we do, let's pray. Father, I thank you today that you... You want to bless us. You want us to live an abundant life, life to the fullest, you say in your word, Lord, that we can enjoy life to the fullest. And so, Lord, today I ask you to speak through this mouthpiece and challenge us and, uh, and, and, and help us to grow in our relationship with you and help us to in, truly enjoy a blessed life. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, there is a phrase that I've been hearing a lot lately, and, 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 and what it is is when you ask someone how they're doing, They'll respond back to you by saying, living a dream. I'm just living a dream. Now, they're usually being facetious when they say it, but I began thinking about that phrase, you know, living the dream. I'm living the dream. You know, God has promised each and every one of us a blessed life, and we can truly live a, 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 the life of dreams, the life of our dreams, if we put him first and we follow his plan for our lives. And so today I want to talk to you about living the life of your dreams. Another way to say it, I guess, would be to say fulfilling God's call on your life. Because if you're a believer, they're actually the same. I mean, God gives every Christian a calling, a, a vision, a, a dream of what their life can be. God has a plan for your life. He has a role that you can perform in building his kingdom. Now, maybe that plan involves becoming a missionary or planting a church or writing books or singing songs, teaching kids, raising children, uh, you know, starting a business, serving in the political arena, working in the medical field. I mean, any number of other possibilities, but God has a plan for your life. And, and, and as you uncover that plan, it becomes your dream. And so today I want to talk about how to nurture that dream, how to build on it, and how to live it out. You know, I've never met a Christian who, who said to me, when all is said and done, it doesn't really matter to me if my life counts for anything or not. I'm not concerned about what I accomplish or whether I fulfill God's calling on my life. I mean, of course no one says that. We all want to do what God has created us to do. We want to fulfill the plans and purposes that God has created us for. But the sad truth is, is that some people never get there. I mean, they mean well, but they never take the steps necessary to ensure that their life becomes the masterpiece that God intends for it to become. 
And, and so they find themselves after some time with maybe a little money in the bank and maybe some interesting vacation photos in their scrapbook and maybe a job promotion or two, but they never really capture the thrill and the satisfaction that comes from being fully engaged in doing God's will and for fulfilling his calling and living out their Holy Spirit-inspired dream. You know, in his book, The Principle of the Path, Andy Stanley talks about how so many of us in, intend to do well and how you know, we don't intend to live lives of failure. And then he says this, but intentions are of little consequence. Direction is everything. Direction determines destination. And so as we talk about living your dream, which is really living out God's calling on your life, we're gonna look at some principles that will help determine and shape the direction of your days. Now we're looking at Isaiah chapter 50 today, and, and this section of Isaiah really revolves around the idea of what it means to be a servant of God. In, in some passages that we look at, the, the servant seems to be the nation of Israel. You know, God's chosen people, the Jewish people. And, and in other passages, the servant seems to be the ultimate servant of God, his chosen Messiah, who is, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ. But in all of these passages, we can learn what it means to serve God today and how that we can fulfill his calling on our lives. So let's look at verses four through seven today, beginning with verse number four. The sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. The sovereign Lord has spoken to me and I have listened. I've not rebelled or turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I've set my face like a stone, determined to do his will, and I know that I will not be put to shame. Now, you can see how these words apply to Jesus. I mean, how they became reality in his life. And in the same way that he came to fulfill God's calling in his life, as followers of Jesus, we are to fulfill God's calling on our lives. Now, these few verses actually indicate five things that you can do to help you to find, define, and refine, and release God's perfect will in your life. So let's take a look at them. And remember, when I talk about, you know, living your dream, and, and I talk about, you know, finding and doing the will of God, they're the same thing. Now, for the believer, there's no difference, and, and, and there shouldn't be anyway, okay? At least there shouldn't be. Now, now, there are five principles to remember. First of all, in order to create the life of your dreams, number one, you have to make it a daily pursuit. Look at verse four again. Morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. Now, you've heard me say before that the best thing you can do is to develop the habit of getting in the presence of God as early as possible each and every day. You know, getting with God as quickly as you can every day. Even if you don't have the time at that moment for maybe an extensive Bible study or a prolonged prayer time, maybe you need to do these things later in the day, I guess, but at least take a few moments as early as possible to present your day to God and to open your heart and to open your mind to the leader leadership of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example of how this plays out. If you want to travel by car from New York to Los Angeles, it's not just a matter of, you know, getting on the freeway and driving a straight line for 3,000 miles, you know, stopping right before you get to the ocean. But the journey from New York to Los Angeles involves a lot of twists, a lot of turns and adjustments and pit stops and maybe even some detours or, and toll roads. And the whole time you're making adjustments and corrections and, and you'll take one road as far as you need to take it until it's time to take another road. Now, if you're traveling with the guidance of a navigational app or a map and a clear idea of where you're going and you're making the correct turns all along the way, you're going to arrive where you're supposed to be. Well, it's the very same way in living out God's will for your life. It's not that he says to you, hey, I want you to go to Los Angeles. Let me know when you get there. It's more like he says to you, I want you to go west and I'll guide you each step of the way. And morning by morning, if you enter into his presence, he will open your understanding to his will. 
Now, many of us have a good idea of where we want to end up, but we sometimes spend our day Jay's driving around in circles. You know, if you want your life to become a life of your dreams, then make seeking God a daily pursuit. Do it as early as you can, if at all possible, in your day, but make it a daily pursuit. Secondly, number two, though, you got to get serious about obedience. Now, obedience is a heavy word, and it may scare some of you off, especially if you're mired in disobedience right now. But uh, there's, there's a big question that each one of us have to answer at each stage in our journey. And the question is this, who's going to be the boss in my life? Who's going to be the boss in your life? Now, let me give you an example of how this works. When, when my kids were little, they used to remind one another quite often, hey, you're not the boss of me. You can't tell me what to do. In fact, one time I heard my daughter Charity say to my son Gabriel, you're not the boss of me, only dad's the boss of me. And my son Gabriel said, oh yeah, well, Jesus is the boss of me. Now that shows what good theological training that Gabriel had, I guess. He, he knew that the authority of Jesus trumps the authority of dad every time. Anyway, so the question really is, I guess, in, 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 is who is the boss of you? Who's the boss of you? Who, who will you listen to? Who will you follow? Who will you obey? Will you try to be your own boss or, and follow your own selfish motives? Or will you follow the whim of the crowd or the, the, the current of cultural expectations? I mean, who will you listen to and let lead you? Isaiah wrote this in verse five. He said, the sovereign Lord has spoken to me and I've listened. I have not rebelled or turned away. Now listen, here's the paradox, Okay. Living the life of your dreams is only possible if you're willing to surrender everything to God's plan for your life. Let me say that again. Living the life of your dreams is only possible if you're willing to surrender everything to God's plan for your life. Some of you might say, well, you know, I have so many areas of disobedience in my life, I don't even know where to start making things right. I mean, I got problems with lust and my finances are out of control and I'm disorganized and I yell at my wife and I slack off at work and I drink too much and I eat like a pig and I stab people in the back. I borrow things without returning them. I cut people off in traffic and very seldom use my turn signal when I drive. I mean, I'm a mess. Where do I start on the path to obedience? Well, you start with the big question. Who's the boss? Who's the boss? Surrender yourself completely to Jesus. Surrender to doing his will. When you settle the big question, you'll find out one, that, that one by one that he will empower you to take control of every other area. You know, just like Isaiah said, the sovereign Lord has spoken to me and I've listened. When you settle the big question of who's the boss of you, then you'll find that God speaks to you day by day about which path to take and which corrections to make along the way. So pursue his presence every day and get serious about obedience. Now here's the third principle to uncover the life of your dreams and that is number three, be willing to suffer. Be willing to suffer. Some of you may be thinking right now, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Be willing to suffer. I don't think so. In fact, one of my main goals in life is not to suffer. Well, here's how it works. You can strive to have an easy life or you can strive to have a great life. It's your choice. Either way, you'll endure some storms. Either way, you'll experience pain and heartbreak and disappointment. But the honest truth is, is that if you choose to have a great life, there will probably be more of it. Suffering is the price of greatness. It's the price of greatness. Let me give you an example of how this plays out in real life. I, I used to play church softball, and a few years ago I stopped playing. I, I went to just help, helping and coaching. But why did I do that, though? Well, it hurt too much. My body was getting old and falling apart. It, it hurt to swing the bat. It hurt to throw the ball. And it especially hurt to run the bases. So even though I enjoy the sport, I decided that it really wasn't important enough for me to play through the pain or to endure the pain afterwards. And guess what? I'll never be known as one of the greats. You know, every day in the MLB, players take the field with, with pain many times, far greater than I was suffering, dealing with things far worse than I am, and they're expected to perform at a level far beyond the level with which I performed. In spite of, uh, of greater pain and greater demands, these players do it every day because for them, it is worth it to play through the pain. That is why they're in the major leagues. 
The apostle Peter wrote this in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. He said, so then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourself with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. Listen, I won't kid you. The journey to greatness, the journey to doing God's will and living the life of your dreams sometimes takes you down a rough and rugged road. It's a price that you have to be willing to pay. Isaiah says here in verse number six, I offered my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting. You see, the truth is, is that, that the significance of these words are, are largely symbolic. The majority of us won't be beaten up or spit upon, I can, I can assure you, but I can guarantee this though, that there will be some hard times. There will be some lonely hours. There will be some moments of despair, some pain and heartache. There may be times when friends betray you or they turn on you. You know, this is something that you need to settle now. You need to accept the fact that suffering is just a part of the process. Now, for example, if you're, if you're chubby and you're out of shape and you decide that you want to look like a bodybuilder, you know there's going to be some pain involved in getting there, right? I mean, you don't go from flab to fab without a little bit of suffering. What's in the same way, you don't build a great life without enduring some difficult days. But keep in mind what Isaiah says in verse 6 and 7. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting because the sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Remember that verse I quoted from Peter just a minute ago about how that we should prepare to suffer like, like Jesus suffered? Well, Peter adds in, ver, in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, he adds, for if you have suffered physically for Christ, you, have fin you are finished with sin. You have finished with sin. You know, just like that bodybuilder, the, the suffering that we endure in pursuing God's will takes us from, from weak to strong. It takes us from lowliness to holiness, from mediocrity to greatness. And so if you want to uncover the life of your dreams, accept the fact that there will be some suffering along the way. Now, here is the fourth principle that will take you there. Number four, stay determined. Stay determined. Look at verse seven. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will, and I know that I will not be put to shame. I love that phrase, set my face like a stone. Kind of reminds me of that scene in the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade movie when after being beaten and knocked around, he discovers that the Nazis have taken his father's grail book uh, deep into Germany. Well, determination registers on Indy's face and he says something of this effect. He said, then let's go get it. Now, knowing that he is gonna be entering into the very center of the Nazi regime, in fact, uh, he actually comes face to face with the Fuhrer himself. Now, Luke used the same phrase to describe Jesus here. It says in Luke chapter nine, verse 51, that Jesus steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Other translations say that he resolutely set out for Jerusalem. In other words, knowing what lay in store for him in Jerusalem, you know that he was gonna be crucified at the hands of the Romans, he was still determined to do the will of God. Kind of reminds me, I know a guy that's been struggling in a job situation for a number of months and you know, he's talked to me about it several times and he would say, you know, I, I, it just isn't working out. My boss gives me no support. The people here don't like me. I, I don't know how to do this. I need help. I, I can't do it on my own. I mean, it's just too hard. This went on month after month and then all of a sudden, I noticed a huge change in his attitude. One day he said, you know, I've decided that this is my job and I'm gonna do it. This is my calling and I'm gonna fulfill it. This thing isn't going to beat me. My days of being a crybaby are over. I, I, I've decided that I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ and I'm gonna do the job that he's called me to do. So what did he do there? You see what he did there? He set his face like a stone. He got determined and overnight he changed and his job performance changed. Listen, if you want to fulfill God's calling on your life, if you want to experience the life of your dreams, you have to become absolutely determined. You have to be willing to say, I will do this and nothing will stop me. Set your face like a stone. Get determined. Now, here's the fifth principle in uncovering the life of your dreams, and that is number five, remember that you'll be serving others. Remember that you will be serving others. Others. Isaiah began this passage by saying in verse number four, the sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. 
Now, there are a lot of weary people out there, and it's our job to give them comfort. I mean, there are people that are weary of sin, they're weary of heartbreak, weary of loneliness, weary of failure, weary of of the struggle they're going through, and they don't know where to turn. And it's our job to bring healing into their lives. Now, I don't know what God's specific will for your life is, but I know that it involves serving others. I know that it involves helping those that hurt and, and picking up those that have fallen. And just as surely as God has called you to greatness, he's called you to be a servant. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 20, verse 26 to 27, he said, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Greatness and serving, they go hand in hand. They go together. So as you seek to uncover the life of your dreams, as you seek to fulfill God's perfect will for your life, remember that whatever God calls you to do, it will involve giving yourself to others. You know, in closing, I quoted Andy Stanley earlier where he says, intentions are of little consequence. Direction is everything. Direction determines destination. You know, I would venture to say that the overwhelming majority of us have good intentions. You know, we wanna live a good, productive, God-honoring life. You know, that's our intention. We need to make sure that it becomes our direction, though. The best life that you could ever possibly hope to live is one that is spent fulfilling God's calling on your life, doing his will. It is without question the life of your dreams. It is living the dream. Now, how do you get there? How do you get there? Five things. You pursue God daily. You pursue obedience. You accept suffering. You set your face with determination and you look to serve others every day. And if you'll do this, at the end of your journey, you're gonna be able to look around and you're gonna be able to say, this is exactly where I want to be. I'm living the dream. God has given me the life of my dreams. You see, God wants to bless you. He wants to give you a blessed life. And if you've never opened your heart or life to Jesus Christ, That's where it starts. You see, to really live the life of your dreams, you you have to open your heart to Jesus Christ and and, and, and begin a relationship with him. You say, Pastor, he wouldn't want me. You don't know what my past is like. You know what? God knows exactly what your past was like. He knows everything about you. And he loves you so much that he allowed Jesus Christ to come to this world, to die upon the cross of Calvary, to pay the price once and for all for the sins of all mankind your sins, my sins, to give you a fresh start. Every one of us, a clean slate, a fresh start, a relationship with him as we invite him into our lives. He's offering that to you as a free gift. He's offering that forgiveness. He's he's paid the price already. But it's kind of like if you go to a restaurant and somebody pays your bill, you can either accept that they paid your bill or you can say, nope, I'm not receiving that. I'm paying my bill anyway. I'm gonna try to pay it anyway. You You have to receive it. And that's your part in the process. The only thing you can do is receive that free gift. And if you've never done that, I wanna encourage you to pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Father, thank you for loving me so much that you allow Jesus to pay the price for my sins. I receive that forgiveness that he paid for. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life, to be my Lord and Savior, and to begin a relationship with me right here, right now. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer in the comment section, say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer today because I want to celebrate with you. And I want to pray that that, that, that that relationship between you and God will just continue to, to grow and flourish and you'll be able to enjoy the life of your dreams. You know, God wants us all to experience a, a blessed life. Live, just live in the dream each and every day. But it requires us to, to pursue him every day, to, to be obedient in, in every way, to, to accept that suffering's gonna come along the way, to do like Jesus and set our face with the determination that we're gonna follow him, we're gonna serve him no matter what the cost, and then it involves us serving others. When we take these five principles and we put them into practice, then we can say, you know what? I'm living the dream. I'm truly living the dream. And so I'm gonna ask that, each, that, that God would help each one of us to to grow in these five areas and that we would be able to say beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm living the dream. Heavenly Father, I thank you today that it's your desire that we have a blessed life. 
You've given us principles. You've, you've not left us in the dark, but you've given us principles in your word on how that we can experience that. How can we, how, how that we can experience a blessed life. Lord, we ask you to take control of our life, lead us, guide us, and direct us into to connecting with you every single day, to, to, to following you, doing what you called us, to let you be the boss in our lives, Lord. To, when we, to, to know that suffering's coming, but knowing that it's, it's worth it in the end. Because Lord, we know that we can overcome and we'll be better and stronger for it. But Lord, we know ultimately it involves serving others. So help us to fulfill the calling that you have upon our lives, to fulfill the plans and purposes that you have for us, to follow you and to experience a blessed life. And we thank you for it. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hey, you have a blessed week. 